Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We truly live in interesting times. Others were dying to be proclaimed president, while we heard someone say he has never attended proclamation ever since he ran for public office. He was even quoted saying, Baka God want me to taste defeat, but it never happened. <clears throat> Change is indeed coming, as someone said, his work in Malacanang begins at 1 p.m. Isn't that change? So whether it's welcome or not, we do not know. Today, we have with us a former lawmaker, a successful strategist. We're hoping a lawyer would uh, be able to join us later today. Someone who says the recent elections is a lot of nonsense and an academician who would tell us how it is in the provinces. As usual, I be, I'll begin by asking questions, and uh, our colleagues from the media will join us in asking questions later. So we have with us a good friend and kababayan, former Senator Francisco Kit Tatad, one of the best columnists Manila Times ever had. Welcome. We have Ms. Malutikia, a political strategist, who would share with us her views on how it was last campaign season, we have Linda Olaguer Montaire um, from the Solidarity for Sovereignty and the Chief Executive of uh, Share and Opportunity, a good friend, Professor Vladimir Mata, and Bert Swan Singh, who will tell us what possible changes are needed to uh, make traffic a bit better, because we're still alive anyway. So let's start. Uh, okay, former, yeah, see Vladi. Pero sa inyo muna, Senator. Did you yeah, I, I did, I did. Yeah, okay. Senator, how would you describe the previous, the last election? How was it? The last election has not ended. <laughs> yes. What do you mean? Uh, well, uh, just mind-boggling in a sense. Uh, well, I belong to the National Transformation Council. And we took the position before the election that uh, <clears throat> the elections lacked uh, legitimacy and uh, validity because the automated election system law was not uh, being followed. And it was not followed up to the very end. And uh, from the very beginning, um, the public perception was that there was going to be massive cheating. And uh, that concern was not being addressed, even by the major players. There's not a single major player who said that uh, we are not going uh, to recognize the results of illegitimate elections. They wanted to be there. And uh, my impression, our impression, was that uh, everyone uh, believed that uh, they would benefit from the cheating. So instead of uh, trying to stop the cheating, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, as far as the presidential contest is concerned, uh, we are happy to see that uh, all the other candidates were so quick to concede uh, their defeat to uh, Mayor Duterte. But as far as the second uh, slot was concerned, we are seeing uh, the protests until now. Uh, uh, I'm pleased that it's uh, Bicolana, my Kababayan, uh, who has been uh, named uh, Vice President-elect and who will be, uh, I assume, uh, proclaimed today. But all the evidence are still coming out. Uh, there's a former congressman from Basilan, from uh, Mindanao, who testified that there was no election in Basilan. 
Really? Yeah, uh, sa Laputin, no? Uh, there are witnesses from Maguindanao who say the same thing with videos, no? And uh, there is uh, a witness from Quezon who said that uh, he had a role in making sure uh, that the, the votes uh, in that area were uh, laundered uh, in favor of the administration candidates. So, okay, uh, we'll have results, official results from the Comelec today, but the question of fraud will remain in the public mind. Uh, now, is it worth it? That's the question. That is indeed the question. Malu, coming from where you are, you're a political strategist. How would you describe the previous election? Well, um, just to disclose, um, I was with uh, Binay, for the presidency, and I was uh, head of one parallel for Lenny uh, Robredo. Um, how was it? Um, well, in offhand, I can say that we can throw the playbook, the playbook of yesteryears in campaign. Uh, why? Because um, the victory of Duterte and Robredo were actually shaped in the 90 days. It wasn't like the traditional 18 months of preparation and then we stick to one single message, one single design of, of uh, collateral. Um, the command control setup was gone in this election. Um, uh, with Duterte, you see him really reacting to the crowd, really playing with the crowd, uh, really just doing sound bites without much debate on policy, without much debate on platform. Um, in the case of uh, Lenny Robredo, she realized early um, this. You know, we we later discovered that the Amatuit became her political nickname. But I think he realized she realized. Uh, Early, it was more of a liability. Yes, the, and, and, and then she needed to set up parallel organizations, which the Liberal Party didn't have any say on. Uh, and now uh, the Ang Matuid is being taunted by some people, no? As, yeah, that, that Lenny is the manifestation of the Ang Matuid, which is also an insult to their presidential candidate. So, uh, what am I saying? He may have been used to it anyway. <laughs> Uh, the, the playbook is now different. Um, um, before, you cannot expect within 90 days that you can have a, a candidate who will be competitive. Um, today, you, we saw that in, in, in Duterte. Um, the, usually, it was very hard to get volumes of people during um, rallies. This one was really amazing, and, and really what broke the, 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 the so-called elite candidates uh, back was the entry of uh, Duterte in Manila. The first salvo at Taguig really broke everybody's uh, back. And, and, and the realization then that organizations, campaign organizations need to be nimble, need to be on their foot to adjust. Kasi dati parang... Ah, the, the thing yan, okay, in, in, ah, kon lang yan, uh, flash on the pan. But really, Duterte showed to everyone that I don't need the platform, I don't need to be media savvy, all I need to do is to listen to the crowd and to play what the crowd wants. It, it's, it may not be good in the long run, but you get the people's sentiment really for you. Uh, 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 in terms of Lenny, you saw her coming from nowhere, ending up uh, with the rank that practically tied. Okay? Uh, you saw there that uh, the more authentic the candidate is, the better for voters to, to, to support. Uh, the more package a candidate is, medyo dumidistansya na yung mga botante. So there are nuances that may be good. Um, in fact, when I heard um, candidate Duterte through his first finger sign and the cast word, I was shocked because traditionally strategists would tell candidates behave properly when you're in the public's eye. But here, 
everyone wanted him to do that because I guess yung yung konsepto ng protest vote talagang galit dun sa administration and I think the administration the outgoing administration has to recognize that because I mean how can you pull away against an incumbent using all the resources? So it's not necessarily the PR but the product itself. The, yeah, the, well, the product. Unfortunately, with Duterte, we still do not know the product. <laughs> Hindi kasi nahimayan. So all, all of us are just waiting. Uh, ah, ganun pala siya. So every day since the time we saw him, you know, leading, it's a realization to us, gusto ba natin siya? Uh, bakit siya ganito? Bakit naging ganun yung pag-select ng, ng mga kabinete? So, ang daming nuances niya na hindi natin alam, which should have been cured by the campaign period. Kasi yung campaign, nagpapakilala ka eh. Mm -hmm. ah, nagpapakilala ka, sinasabi mo kung anong plataforma mo, at ginagawa mong endearing yung sarili mo sa butante. Okay. Hindi niya yung ginawa. Ang ginawa lang niya, endearing. Okay. Well said. Linda, uh, your group says you're not convinced na may eleksyon nangyari. Bakit? Uh, yes. Uh, we came up with a statement uh, that says uh, the solidarity for sovereignty rejects the 2016 elections. Now, why do we say that? If we look back to the elections of 2016, we must always put it in the context of Malacanang's plan, we believe. And what was that plan? To ensure that after 2016, when Noy Aquino steps down, no imprisonment, incarceration, etc. will happen. Doon siya takot eh. That's why they have so many plan A's, plan B, plan A, B, C, D, may scenario sila. So, they were playing the tab. That's why we agree with um, Senator Tatad that the elections are not over. Diretso pa yan. Kasi hindi pa nasisigurado eh. Takot na takot si Aquino, BSA the third, na pagdating ng panahon, uh, his cousin, the lawyer, told him, uh, you will be incarcerated at least for 26 years with all the crimes and violations of the Constitution that you have done. So they want to make sure, that's why uh, even Noel was part of that scenario, and then uh, we had the uh, um, other scenario where Amar Rojas would be uh, accepted, kaya nga they tried to make him uh, number two, but then Meron ngayon yung plan B, uh, nilaro na rin si Duterte so that si Duterte, uh, remember, in 2010, we did not believe that Noy Noy Aquino got 5 million extra votes. That was planted because of the system, the automated electoral system. We filed the case with the Supreme Court. They never paid attention to that, and many others did also. So what we are saying is that it was repeated this time. We do not agree that he has 16 million. We are saying that he is also a digital president in the same manner that Noy Noy Aquino was a digital president in 2010. So with that, uh, what we are saying now is that we are not agreeable to just accept the 2016 elections. Why? Remember, if we go back, the first time this happened, the parang yung mga nasa taas, ibaliwala lang nila yung election. Look at Kiko Pangilinan, and then he has come back as senator. Mr. Noted. And then at the time, Nong Rales, Mr. Noted. So ngayon, yung inaanong protesta ni um, Bongbong Marcos, sasabihin lang, oh, sige, you just file later. What we're trying to say is that those in the top, economic, political uh, oligarchs are just trampling on the sovereignty of the people. They don't mind the will of the people. Ano ba yan? Total kami ang may control. I set aside lang namin yan, tapos sila. But we have been studying that and we will not allow that anymore. Too much. We have been uh, patiently watching and then waiting for the past six years from 2010 mm -hmm. up to now. So we are saying we are rejecting that and we have prepared and we are ready to counter and to stop this kind Dai. of attitude by those at the top na ibaliwala na lang ang sovereign win. Yeah, pero how would you discount those who voted for Tess Daman and for the Feel Health Lady and oh, Manny Pacquiao? Uh, I don't know if, I guess everybody here is aware, we had information that at one time, Komele ko sa telos, labing walo ang nagbayad ng 180 million to 200 million to become senator. So they were at telos, sino ngayon ang kanilang papanigan? Now, that's why you look at Sergio Smenya and then uh, Gingona, but mainly Sergio Smenya, look at him out of the uh, lineup. He was really uh, set aside. Well, because he did not pay. 
because he did not pay. And uh, it was the Liberal Party that chose really who were the ones who should win. So we cannot agree to that. Now, ano, next elections, ganun and man, next elections. So in other words, we are controlled by those at the top. So what will happen? Yung mga tao may pagkakataon, wala, parating mahirap yan. So yung Smartmatic played an important role. Of course. That's why it's unconstitutional as far as we are concerned because the Constitution says there should be, uh, it only should be COMELEC that should handle the election. Any other uh, group cannot. And what has been happening? Smartmatic has been intervening. That's why our first basic reason is that it has been un unconstitutional from 26, I'm from right. 2010. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Malupit <laughs> yun All right. Senator, brief reaction before I get the opinions of the two gentlemen. Well, uh, Linda uh, is in agreement with the position of the NTC. We have not issued a post-election statement as an organization, uh, but we stand by our earlier statement. Uh, with respect to Smartmatic, there were early reports that at least four uh, members, four people from Smartmatic were ready to blow the whistle. Uh, for, for whistleblowers um, to expose uh, what happened inside. Uh, pero the latest report is na ayos yata ng LP top dogs. So, so the nawala yung whistle? Uh, nawala yung uh, sipol. <laughs> no. So, uh, we are hoping that other evidence will come forward. Okay. Masaya ito. You know, akala ko tapos na. Sa pasay lang bumaha ng pera. So may bumaha pa lang pera somewhere. Bert, what have you heard? How do you look at the previous elections? Please. Frankly speaking, uh, I leave that to the uh, experts on elections. Uh, uh -huh. We're more concerned about... Uh, Pakilapit lang po ng mikrofon. We're more concerned that to what will happen to transportation. Yan ang uh, ano namin, tinitingnan namin. Because saan tayo makakarating? Saan tayo makakarating? No? Uh, like for example, uh, will it solve uh, the problem ng mga ordinary commuters na they have to wake up at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning to be able to reach the office at 8 o'clock? Uh, no? mm -hmm. Mga ganong uh, sistema. And uh, well, um, the, yung comment ni Mayor Duterte na ang tingin niya, mga batas dito sa atin is suggestion, no? option. So, yun ang, yun ang tinitingnan namin. No? Mm -hmm. Baka may magagawa. Be, baka may magagawa. Ah, okay. So, sa tingin niyo ba yung binabangkit na taong maupo sa DOTC? Sensitive naman. Dahil ang sabi nila yung outgoing manhid. Eh. I, I don't know whether it's true. <coughs> well, I, I know Art to God. Eh. Uh, we've been together uh, in Rotary. Uh, some years back, no? And uh, he's not an alien as far as transportation is concerned, especially on logistics. Kasi logistics person yan, eh, uh, in his private life before he became a CDC president, no? Mm -hmm. Nung, uh, before the election. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I've also heard something good about him, but you know, as they say, maraming magaling lang sa simula, pero pag naupo na, nagkakamnisya. <laughs> Uh, that's what I heard. Yeah, okay. Anyway, Professor, coming from Share an Opportunity, which is an NGO, tell us how do you look at children's situation in the countryside? Yeah, uh, salamat sa pag invite nyo sa amin. Uh, from a policy perspective, uh, sabi nga ni Sir, we leave that to the political analy uh, analyst to talk about the political situation, the post-election scenario. But from a political, uh, from a policy perspective, uh, inaasahan namin na by this time, meron na siyang mga specific pronouncement on uh, youth and child uh, programs. No? Uh, currently, uh, as we talk right now, uh, 4 million pa rin na kabataan ang walang uh, proper sanitary toilet. 4 million na kabataan na sa forced labor at 5.5 million na walang opportunity to go to school or yung dropout uh, rate sa mga elementary at high school lumalala pa rin. Sa isang uh, pag-aaral ng uh, Philippine Institute of uh, yung sa PIDS, development eh, studies, development studies uh, tuloy-tuloy eh, even when 
2010, nung umupo ang ating uh, kasalukuyang presidente, tila hindi siya talaga nagkakaroon ng reversal doon sa mga problema sa kabataan at sa mga youth. No? Katulad ng mga statistics na pinakita namin, uh, nagaling din sa kanila. Galing din, din sa pamahalaan at uh, siguro hindi natin pwedeng uh, questionin yun dahil galing din sa kanila. Nagpapatunay na talagang medyo tal lumalala pa rin yung sitwasyon sa ating mga kanayunan. Uh, katulad namin sa Share and Opportunity, isang NGO na ngayon may kasalukuyan kaming 6,000 mga kabataan na under our custody. At uh, direct po yung aming involvement at uh, tinitiyak na magkaroon ng uh, sapat na nutrition, for example, uh, education, mga kabataan na yon para ma-insure na mayroon silang uh, uh, competitive uh, advantage over the other uh, students na nag-aaral sa, uh, sa private school, for example, para makatungtong ng high school and eventually sa tertiary. No, so, sa, sa amin, sa aming uh, hanay, uh, sa sa Child and Youth uh, Commu uh, Civil Society Organizations, sana by this time, eh, meron na rin mga malinaw na uh, programa ang ating uh, papasok na uh, presidente. Dahil uh, whether we like it or not, sa aming pananaw, uh, uh, ang trabaho magsimula na agad. By, by June 13, noon time, dapat mal malinaw na yung ating uh, Uh, patutunguhan para tiyakin na magkaroon ng tunay na pagbabago. The change is coming dito okay. sa area ng sektor. So, na. you're optimistic that the Duterte administration will hit the ground running then fall flat on its face? Yun na nga. Unfortunately, uh, this time, parang wala pa eh. Wala pang certainty. Kat katulad ng sinabi ni Imam Malu, nung eleksyon, hindi naman siya nagsalita tungkol dun sa mga substantial issues sa kabataan, sa mga children. Kaya uh, ngayon, uh, nag-aabang pa kami. Nag-aabang pa ang civil society organizations sa uh, sektor ng kabataan at uh, mga children kung ano ba yung direksyon doon. At ngayon nga, wala pa rin uh, na itatalaga o uh, na-identify na, na mangunguna. Kunyari sa DSWD, na pangunahing institusyon na Meron mga na talaga. Si Judy Tagiwalo. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, Pero I will have to ask you this because you're a graduate of MNSA. Yes, How sir. does uh, yes, Judy Tagiwalo sit with you, objectively? Uh, personally, hindi ko naman po siya kakilala at, uh, <laughs> at ako is nung panahon na generation nila, hindi talaga... Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I would so you're quite younger. All right. Can yes, uh, yes, Senator. Can I react to this statement? No? Uh, let us uh, try to be fair to the incoming uh, government. No? Uh, today, uh, the Comelec Uh, the, rather, the National Canvassing Board will proclaim the president-elect and the vice president-elect. No? Uh, from today uh, up to June 30, they'll have uh, 30 days. June 30 is when they will take their oath as officials of the government. And then uh, on the fourth Monday of July, uh, we'll have the opening of Congress Uh, when the president will address the nation and hopefully uh, define his program. Between now and then, uh, we cannot expect uh, the incoming administration uh, to give us uh, a full rendering of the program that is uh, going to be in place in the next uh, six years, assuming there is one, no? Uh, but... Uh, Ma, if I were in their place, hindi ako masyado magsasalita ngayon, mag-aaral muna ako. No? Para pagdating ng panahon, meron akong sasabihin sa bayan. But right now, may mga nabigkas na mga salita na uh, dapat siguro yun ang pag-usapan natin. One, uh, meron coalition government with the left. For cabinet positions are to be given to the nominees of the uh, CPP, NPA, NDF. Yan bang coalition government na yan? Napag-usapan ba yan ng kampanya? Uh, was Mayor Duterte a candidate, a coalition candidate of the PDP Laban and the uh, CPP, NPA, NDF? Kung hindi, um, by, by what right? Is he proposing, is he announcing that there'll be a coalition government with the left? Ay, dapat, tayo, dapat resulta ng boto ng mamamayan yan, 
ginusto ng bayan na magkaroon ng koalisyon. No? Uh, well, tapos na ang Cold War. No? We are not going to revive it. Pero, uh, yung ating insurgency, buhay na buhay pa. Nandiyan pa. In fact, uh, may balita ngayon sa Bahayagan na uh, pupunta sa saan? Sa Oslo. Uh, si uh, uh, Doresa si uh, Secretary Doresa at saka si Bebot Buelio uh, para uh, makipag-usap sa mga kaliwa. Well, Secretary Buelio is one of the nominees for the left. Pero siya makikipag-usap on behalf of the government with the left. Anong klaseng, anong klaseng drama ito? So, uh, that's just one issue. No? Another issue, uh, yung Ned uh, designate mo, Uh, the director general designate is now talking of uh, uh, limiting the number of children na pwede panganak ng ating kababayan tatlo lang daw ano so yung neda mag will turn this uh, nation into a centrally planned economy we are not a centrally planned economy at saka sa diktadura lang nangyayari yung magdidikta yung pamalaan si Stalin magdidikta kung ilang ilang anak ang pwede kang magkaroon. Oh. Hey, These papa, are very serious issues. Papa, Ay, hindi pa tapos, Melo, uh, yung ating uh, uh, dinaanan doon sa RH Law. Uh -huh. dumugo, halos dumugo ang bayan doon. Hindi pa tapos yung uh, division na ginawa nila. Ngayon, lalong hahati yun ang bayan. This issue. So, this are uh, just two of the things that they have said in public na dapat pag-usapan. Ano ba? Mm -hmm. Ano ba tingin nyo sa atin? Okay. Uh, speaking of the second statement which they said, no? tatlong anak sa pamilya, uh, do you think this is a violation of the families, you know, to have children? Yung karapatan nila to have children. <laughs> Moral law, constitution, the violation of this, no? Mm -hmm. Eh, walang karapatan ng Estado magdikta sa sino mang mag-asawa na kayo eh, dapat kayo may sampung anak o dalawa lamang o tatlo lamang. Sa China, mayroong one child policy. Binago na yun. Dalawa uh, lang ngayon. Binabago na nga. Oo. Uh -huh. Okay. Maganda to. From a political strategist, Malu, ano ba yung mga gusto ng tao pang marinig? Dahilan sa nakakonfine lang dun sa traffic at dun sa droga. Hindi ba meron pang mas malalayon na issues? Curfew. The curfew? Oo, totoo yun, Melo. In fact, uh, kung titingnan mo lahat ng surveys, ang traffic at saka ang crime were not the hot button, hot, I mean, salient, most salient issues. Hindi siya kasi got. So, nung lumabas yung mga hot button issues ni Mayor Duterte, um, everyone were saying hindi ito importante sa taong bayan. Pero siya, sinasabi niya, kung na-provide yung na maayos ang traffic, na walang kriminalidad, then the, the environment, uh, the uh, economy will prosper. Yun yung other side of looking at how you make sure that there is economic growth. Um, maraming bumenta doon, lalo na sa NCR. Kasi kung titingnan natin ang NCR, initially, hindi naman Duterte country ang NCR. It used to be Binay, then po Then, Duterte. Um, makikita mo yung shift. Even yung mga taxi drivers na nagsasabi, ay ma'am, oo, kay Binay kami. Biglang, ay ma'am, kay po kami. Kasi eh, PJ yan, ganyan-ganyan. Tapos, last two weeks, makikita mo sila very um, conscientious na sinasabi ang, ang pambato nila si Duterte. Pag tinanong mo, ang sasabihin nila, ma'am, mas maayos ang takbo ng trapiko, uh, mas less ang kriminalidad, mas makakapagtrabaho kami ng maayos. So, ma makikita mo, ito lang yung eleksyon na yung traditionally hot button issues, yun yung sinasabi kong gut. Pagkain sa pagkainan, trabaho, edukasyon, parang sinet aside eh. At ang talaga naging, naging driving force, eh yung traffic at saka... So, so, mataas ang expectation doon uh, dito sa dadating na administrasyon. Pag hindi niya natututukan yung problema sa EDSA, sabi niya, magde-declare siya daw ng crisis, 
um, madali mag-declare ng crisis. It's not being a crisis situation. Ma- mahirap yung solusyon. Kasi yung solusyon, as probably si Mr. Swansing would know, long term yun. Hindi, yeah. wala kang stopgap na ma- magagawa sa EDSA. He talks about trains being built by China that takes time. Uh, he talk about uh, really killing... Diba? Uh, ang daming ng local government officials taking from what Mayor Duterte did in, 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 in Davao. There is this mayor from Batangas na pi- iniikot niya lahat ng mga nag- uh, sa droga without being you know convicted and all. May walk of shame. Meron si Mayor uh, Osmeña. Tommy Osmeña. Uh, barilin mo, meron kang 50,000. So, so again, at meron na hong nakabaril. Who, ga- who got 50,000, uh, a police, uh, one of the police in, in Cebu. So makikita mo yung, 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 yung reaction from a Duterte uh, Statement, statements. No? Uh, really, uh, nagre-resonate sa taong bayan. Yeah. Uh, Malu, my guess is nobody in the police force who would follow the Davao example would get promoted. Because they need clearances from CHR and the ombudsman. No, in fact, I was surprised because when when na, nakita nila yung layo ng pulgada ni Mayor Duterte sa result, sinabi ka agad ng Chief PNP, actually, ho, kaya namin gawin yung trabaho namin. Eh, kaya pala yung gawin, but hindi nyo pa dati ginawa? So, makikita mo, it, it's it's there are institutional problems, uh, there are probably leadership uh, problems na who wouldn't want to take take a look at the drug situation because really the drug situation is is all around us um pero again babalikan mo do sa study ng electoral behavior hindi yun ang dahilan ng isang botante para iboto ang isang kandidatong pagkapangulo ngayon lang nagbago yan um ngayon rin nagbago ako uh, i will i do agree with the points of uh, senator Tata at saka si Ms. Montaire regarding smartmatic i think uh We, we should proceed with the audit. Uh, kung sino man yung tamaan, tamaan, because uh, tama yun eh, ang Smartmatic is, 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 uh, is um, provider, a foreign provider. In three election cycles, may problema siya parate. Yung first time na ginamit, ang problema niya, eh, yung second time is transmission eh, and the 60-30-10. The first time, I think, was the failure of the PICOS, yung breakdown. Second, transmission. Today, makikita mo, um, if you do a uh, bird's eye view of the election results, makikita mo hindi naman yung operation ginawang nationwide, pero strategic. Strategic in the bailiwicks. May inad sa bailiwick ng malakas, merong inales sa bailiwick ng mahina. But this, we need proof. Katulad ng sinasabi ko, yung sin- parating sinasabi ng kritiko na ang undervoting is equivalent to fraud is not true. Because ang undervoting, you cannot even decide, you cannot tell the voter, uh, o iboto mo ito. The voter can intentionally not vote for a vice president or tactically vote uh, or, or yung dot na manipis, thereby making the ballot really uh, not a valid one. So, so mali yung sabihin undervoting is equivalent to fraud. Uh, ang undervoting at ang overvoting magkaiba. Um, kasi naguguluhan na yung um, publiko na pag sinabi undervoting, electoral fraud yun. Uh, hindi po, kasi yung, yung undervoting, kung titingnan nyo yung literature, uh, since 1998 meron po tayong undervoting. At yung undervoting na yan, eh, uh, nagkakahalaga ng mga 3 million votes. So, that is from 1998 na manual hanggang 2004 hanggang naging automated. So, ano sinasabi ko? Bakit may undervoting? Kasi wala naman yung threshold na nilalagay ang ating batas. Na pag ang isang presinto umabot ng 10% undervote, kunyari ho, 1,000 ang isang presinto, pag 10%, malaki yun. Pag tinotal mo yon million yon Pero dahil walang threshold, hindi nagsasabi na pag ma- nag-breach ka ng 10% na undervote, failure of election. Imaginin mo pag nagkaroon ng ganon, strictly, ang tendency natin magkaroon ng failure of elections. So yung undervoting has been with us since 1998. And, and it ha- has been the norm. Yung norm na 3 million, it used to be 10.9, 2.5, na na na, 2.5. 1.9, 2.5, ngayon 3.9. So, it's within the normal curve. 
Mm-hmm. So, in, hindi mo pwedeng i-declare may electoral fraud doon. Ang kailangan mong tingnan talaga is the system software and the SD cards. Kasi ang, ang, doon sa SD cards, makikita mo kung nagbago talaga yung pinadala. Okay. So, okay. the senior's vote. Well, the senior's vote is another... Again, that's why I agree with both of them. That, that the system, the elect, our electoral system has to be audited after every election cycle. Ang problema kasi nangyayari, si Comelec make, makes a report, minsan too late na yung report, and then he, he, they do not cure the problem. Uh, perfect example is the voters list. Yung voters list natin, nagka-jumble-jumble, magkakapit-bahay, magkakapamilya, magkaibang presinto. That never happened. It used to be, kilala mo kung sino yung bumoboto sa presinto mo. Um, I wasn't able to vote simply because my name wasn't there. Ang suggestion sa akin, pumunta daw sa bawat presinto, <laughs> sa polling center. And there was one who didn't have a, a biometric, kaibigan ko rin, biometrics, wala siyang biometrics, pero nandun yung pangalan niya. At nakaboto siya. At nakaboto siya. So, again, it all boils down to your garbage in, garbage out. Let's have a clean voters list. Let's have a COMELEC that works 24-7, not during, uh, very near the election cycle, na wala ka ng elbow room, nagkakagulo kayo. Uh, you have to test the system. Okay. Ang kagandahan lang nito ngayon, may mga security features na linagay. Yung, I mean, the receipt is a victory for the advocates. Uh, pero yung receipts, gaano bang katagal yun? Eh, thermal paper lang yun. Precisely. Diba? So, so these things have to be audited. But and, and once you're as victorious as Digong, you will not go for that. Nanalo ka na eh. Oh, that's a problem eh. We should have uh, a victorious leader wanting electoral and political reforms. Kasi kung hindi natin gagawin, eh, this previous leader, we never got any political reforms under Aquino. Yeah, we got statements, all right. Yes, but, you know, we need those things in order to make our election uh, more bearable probably in the outcome. Kasi kung credibility and legitimacy ang parating magiging question, mahirap mag-govern. The, 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 the accelerating part is campaigning. But the most <laughs> difficult part is governing. And these two who will be proclaimed will be entering that phase okay. of governing. Dai. Parang napapailing ka sa mga sinasabi ni na Senator Kit at ni Malu. Ano ba gagawin niyo? Will you bring down this government? Ano ba? Um, diretso yun. Eh. Oo, okay, diretso. Um, we already stated in our formal official statement that we reject elections 2016. Now, what are the implications? If we reject 2016 elections, it means all that goes with it, we reject. Pero hindi ito pwedeng salita lang. Dahil kung salita lang, ganun rin ang mangyayari. Walang uh, mag-iintindi, walang makikinig. And even those at the top will just say, o oh, pabayaan na yan, mahanggang salita lang yan. Hindi naman nila kaya. We are here at the top. We are the powerful people. What we want will be followed. That's what has been happening all these years, all these decades even. But we have to put a stop to that. That's why for the past years, Minimum of six years, but since 2010, when the Supreme Court ignored what it was that we filed, yung TRO on the proclamation of uh, Aquino, we have learned to study what we should do and prepare for it. So, down the line, down the years, we have set up our own parallel system. And when the ripe moment comes, we will be able to install or establish the parallel system that we have been preparing. So, so it's a shadow government? Yes. Oh, how shadowy is the shadow government? Baka sabihin naman gano'n, shadowy yan. Eh, oh, yan. It's up to you, but uh, we are really focusing on that. We are focusing on that and we have prepared for that and we are ready for whatever it is that must be done. But remember, uh, one of the things that made uh, Duterte very popular was his call for change, yung pagbabago. But look at what is happening. She is saying dapat i-review ang um, electoral system, yung AES. Eh kung gusto niya, pero hindi naman nagagawa. Pero kung talagang change siya, pati yan, kahit may epekto sa kanya, i-change niya yon para makita talaga yung katotohanan. But aside from that, 
Look at all the people surrounding him. That's not changed. They're the same old people. Look at those surrounding him from the FBR days and from the Gloria days. Also, what kind of an economy do you expect? Oh, we will have more of the independent power producers. Look at us now paying $1 billion a year at least with a sovereign guarantee, with no manufactured uh, electricity. We are paying that because that is the fruit of these people who are there. Look at Esperon. Oh, he sold 60 million pesos worth of uh, arms, ammunition to the um, very powerful family in Maguindanao. Oh, now he is also part of that uh, new group. Is that change? That's the same old garbage. That's the same old system. Walang pagbabago makikita ang tao dyan. And then, uh, look at all the others, hindi lang sa economy. Pati yung mga ibang taong mga pinipili niya. And kaya nga siya nire-reject rin ng iba because there's a perception from our information, our intelligence reports that he will not last long. Kaya yung iba natatakot tanggapin because i-assassinate ia siya, that's eh. our report. I-assassinate ia siya or tatanggalin siya ng presenting administration to ensure Lenny Robredo will be the president and then hawak nila and then si Lenny Robredo na hawak nila will now make sure that Noy Noy Aquino will not be imprisoned or incarcerated or uh, charged etc. Wow. So that's something that we all have okay. to consider. All right. Malu. Kasi nasabi yung Lenny Robredo wala ho sa plano ni Lenny Robredo na na well, unfortunately, she ran under LP. That's a reality. And you say it's unfortunate? Yes, because there was a debate. There was a debate that was not really made public. Um, and she wasn't really the first choice, to be honest about it. Uh, she wasn't. So. And the first choice was? I cannot reveal. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Alam na siguro ng media kung sino yung first choice. Um, you reject it. <laughs> That's a nice one. That's a so, nice one. So, yung, yung sabihin kasama si Lenny sa pagplaplano, uh, sa tingin ko, ho, naki, nung nakita ko sa kampanya, na hindi naman siya talaga pinupunduhan ng LP at hindi naman siya ang mahalaga sa LP, sa so, tingin ko, ho, hindi totoo yun. Pangalawa, ho, para ho, malaki hong stretch na um, um, Lenny will be part of a group that will destabilize um, the Duterte <coughs> government, um, uh, that is really a stretch. Uh, and thirdly, um, I think Le we should give Lenny Robredo her due simply because it was very hard for her to be a candidate for LP. Uh, medyo malaman ho yun, pero ayoko nang dagdagan kasi um, maraming masasaktan pag nagsalita. Pero yun, nga, yun lang, ang gusto lang niya talaga makatulong Kung hindi nga siya manalo, okay lang sa kanya. At ang idadagdag ko, ironically, uh, it would be a Marcos who will prove that the electoral system in this country is problematic. Because if he continues with that audit that he is requesting, hindi ko ba ironic yon na ang Marcos ang siyang magbubukas and probably clear things out. And I think... Um, Marcos, yes, being defeated, may not necessarily have been defeated. He actually won. If you look how things are, he was able to test certain strategies. He was able to prove to everyone that even if I just do ground war, tantandaan po natin, wala siyang ad na linabas. He could readily have won this race. Pero, yung issue kasi ng pondo, ayaw niyang sabihin may pondo, ayaw niyang mag-sorry, um, so hindi na ilabas yung pondo, kung ano man yung pondo. But he went ground. Um, at napakalaking realization sa lahat na meron siyang 14 million plus votes. Okay. That in itself is already winning. And and if you know how the Marcos mind thinks, I, sir, I think you are better there than me. I think this is just a prelude of 2022. Uh, my sense is he will be running for 2019, get himself back in the Senate, and in the Senate, he will use this advocacy on electoral reform and, and run for 2022. Let me ask you, uh, Malu, bago mag-react si Dai, uh, sa palagay mo ba yung pag-demonetize ng pera before elections yes. had something to do with, you know, 
Yes. Campaign strategies? Yes. Um, and, and I think the activity of PCGG, uh, very near election cycle, and having a PCGG chair as chair of COMELEC, those are already red flags to a Marcos run. But very strategic mga decisions ni Senator Marcos. Uh, even getting, even the mother getting the Senator Santiago is strategic. Um, so you have to look at several steps from here to read the Marcos plan. Because really, if, if, if it will be a Marcos who will clean the electoral system in the country, uh, dagok yun sa ating lahat. Okay. Dai, short reaction bago kay Senator Kit. Uh, okay. Um, I don't think it will be Marcos who will, have, or who will be able to change it. Uh, he will not be given the... Uh, opportunity to do that. But let me go back to what you are saying about the incoming vice president that will become the president, that uh, she is not capable of doing anything. Let me just bring back our memory to the death of Jesse Robredo. The Solidarity for Sovereignty came out with a very clear statement. It was not an ordinary accident. We have uh, been saying, we have mm. been calling for an investigation. It was plain and simple murder. Now, the thing about Robredo is that his wife said, I will have it investigated. But look at what happened. When it, they offered her the um, position of congresswoman, my God, she became silent. So in other words, she is clay in their hands. We know that there's a cabal around Noy uh, Noy Aquino, and she is playing right into that. So what we are saying is that if she could allow not her husband's death, a sudden death or murder being investigated because she became congresswoman, and then later on she became um, the candidate for vice president. In short, that's why they like her, because she can easily be controlled or manipulated. Right. Let's put it in another plane. What if she was just waiting for the opportunity, and the opportunity came when she's about to be proclaimed vice president? Opportunity to? To say something like, I'd like this investigated. Oh, well, that remains to be seen. Yeah. But as what far, if? What, what if? if? Yeah. But from the way things have happened, she is lapping it up. My God. So she never gave any indication she wanted justice for her husband. When Yusek Puno raided their apartment, their condo, and then his office, uh, and then um, remember, from what we understand, they were looking for the money that was given by the Jordanian embassy for the release of the Jordanian journalist, which was $120 million, and only 10 million pesos was given by Robredo to the Abu Sayyaf, and then for the other Malampaya funds. So, malalim ito, hindi ito simple. We are a country, we are citizens of this country. We should know, we should be vigilant, because hindi pwedeng i-foster a palace of, oy, how nice she is, how sweet, and etc. And yet we know in reality, some things will happen. It is still Noy Noy who is in control until June 30. And they will try to do that before the June 30 ends. All right. Senator Kim, being a columnist that you are, do you have anything to say? Well, napapalao tayo rito, Melo. You know, I'm a very, in a very peculiar situation because I'm Bicolano. And uh, there was a time when I enjoyed the support of the entire Bicolania. I'm also Bicol. Yeah, and Linda is also Bicolana. No? There's a time when people were carrying me on their shoulders as their political leader in Bicol. And uh, now uh, the perception is that Lenny has the support of Bicolandia. But I am forced to agree with what uh, Linda is saying here, no? Uh, we have had this incidents of uh, necropolitics in this country. Uh, Aquino was assassinated in uh, 83. The, the wife became president. There was no effort to investigate the death of Ninoy, to find out who the real masterminds were. The son became president. He's president until now, until June 30, he'll president. There's no effort to investigate how his father died, who were really behind the murder of his father. Now, I was hoping that when Lenny uh, entered the house, uh, when she became, as, as congresswoman, 
she would demand an investigation. She would try to find out who killed her husband. That didn't happen. And uh, the general suspicion, as aired by, as uh, stated by Linda, is that he was killed. It was no ordinary accident. There were circumstances. No, I don't want to repeat what has been said because I cannot validate uh, the suspicions. But my friends in Aga were saying, you know, uh, when Melakanyang was doing everything to make Jesse appear as a hero bigger than all the other heroes. Sabi mga kaibigan ko, mga kapitbahay ni Jesse, and Jesse was a good friend of mine, no? Umuwi ka nga rito, pag-usapan natin, hindi na namin nakikilala si Jesse. Oh, masyado nang, iba, iba yung lumalabas sa diyaryo. No? He was a good man, but he, he wasn't that kind of a hero as far as they were concerned. So, uh, in fact, pinahirapan sa commission on appointments for you. No, precisely. Uh, what what Pinoy did was he he was named DILG secretary, but he was given the LG portion of the DILG, and you know the the LGUs have long become autonomous. The only real thing there is the interior, interior police. But the police was given to the undersecretary, Enrico Puno. So that's how they treated him when he was alive. After his death, kung ano nung gustong gawin ni Pinoy, yun, ginawa niya para ipakita na ah, ah, ganito si Jesse Robredo. Pati yung chinelas niya was glorified. Oh, oh, Nawala no. tuloy doon sa isang nagmimigay ng chinelas. No. I mean, I mean, uh, wearing chinelas uh, to the cabinet uh, should never be glorified, no? Yes. Oh, it's a no-no. Hindi man ang ginagawa yan. No? Anyway, uh, sorry uh, to those who disagree with that point of view. But uh, that's it. Ngayon, in the last, uh, ito nga, uh, I have to agree with Linda that Pinoy was in control of the operation. No. Yun. Yun ang pinakamalaking kondito. However decent, however nice Lenny was, however deserving uh, she was, the point is, Pinoy decided that Bongbong Marcos cannot be vice president, that if he became vice president, he would lead a people power march to bring him down. Mm -hmm. So, malinaw. I mean, no further arguments needed. Okay. Thank you, no, Mr. Uh, now, just to add one more point. Uh, what can we expect uh, from uh, this government? Uh, there is uh, a suggestion to revise the Constitution. For what purpose? Foreign ownership of everything that we have. Lupa. Uh, exploitation of uh, natural resources, public utilities. Ang problema natin dito sa bayan natin, 99% of our countrymen do not have a chance to own land in Manila. Bakit maging problema natin yung the right of the Dayuhan to have all the things that they want to own? And we're going to go through a constitutional revision just for this? in an abbreviated process. No? I don't think they are intending to call uh, elections for delegates to a constitutional convention. So, what's the problem, Melo? Okay, let's go first. Bert, more than the transport, being a Filipino citizen and observing what has happened, do you think the social media was a factor for Duterte's victory? I think so. I think so. I think so. Bakit? Saan nakita to? Well, uh, you, if you're a Facebook follower, makikita mo yung mga comments doon. Eh, no? And uh, most of the comments, eh, actually, ang nagpanalo kay, <laughs> ang nagpanalo kay siguro, pag nagpan, I don't know if Keith would agree with me, maraming bumoto kay Digong, not because he, they like Digong. 
It's because they hate the present government. Mm-hmm. So, kung ginawa lang nila yung trabaho nila, walang digong. Walang digong. Hmm. Kung naging sensitive sila sa commuters, yes. sa mga OFW na nalaglaga yes. ng bala. Nalaglaga ng bala. Yung mga everyday, ano, ma- malaking ano yun, ha? Malaki, nagre-reverberate yun eh. Those are, sabihin mo siguro, petty issues yan. Yung laglag bala, yung ano. Pero nagre-reverberate yan. Yan yung nararamdaman ng ordinaryong tao. At yun na nakita sa overseas yes. votes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Eh yung Nutriban, bakit hindi nabili? Sinabi ni Grace po, magkakaroon ng freelance for students. Eh, constituents nyo, mahihirap na bata. Bakit nila hindi nabili? Alam mo Matatalino na yung ating mga kababayan ngayon eh. Hindi na sila naniniwala dun sa cosmetic na mga pronouncement ng mga local governments natin or ng national government. Like for example, yung DOH, DSWD, ang gusto nila yung tangible, substantial na reform sa kanilang mga buhay. Katulad ng mga kabataan, gusto nila yung magkaroon ng opportunity, maka- magkaroon ng scholarship para makapag-aral, makatapos ng university. Kasi alam nila na yun ang pasaporte nila para ma-ibsan o ma-overcome ma- nila yung intergenerational poverty. Sa akin pag-iikot ho, sa ating bansa, kasi meron kaming Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, mga rural uh, LGS po ito, rural communities, yun po ang mga aspirasyon ng mga kabataan. Hindi na nila gusto yung mga uh, cosmetic na you know, pupunta doon, medical mission, one day, two days, magbibigay ng uh, t-shirt o chinelas. <laughs> Siguro tatanggapin nila yon pero ang gusto nila, gusto ho namin ng no, structural reforms, kung talit po sa CCT program natin. Mas, tig- mas kailangan tignan yung, yung supply uh, sex side ng uh, CCT. For example, meron pong uh, mga eskwelahan, uh, may mga bata na gusto mag-aral, pero yung kanilang mga classroom naman eh dilapidated. Galing po ako sa isang uh, municipality sa Iloilo, hanggang ngayon po, yung kanilang mga school building doon, sira-sira pa, no? na yung mga bata nasa silong pa ng mga mangga. Practically, technic- uh, no, figuratively. No? So, sabi nila, ayaw na namin ang ganyan. Gusto namin talagang maramdaman namin ang pamahalaan dito sa aming mga lugar, dito sa liblib na mga, mga lugar namin. Nabanggit ko na ho kanina, ako uh, ano eh, na, na, nalungkot po ako dito sa aming community, for example ho, sa Iloilo, dyan sa Municipality of Concepcion, nagkaroon ho ng, uh, ano, ng uh, yung faucet no? at uh, binuksan nung bata at tinitignan lang po niya yung pagdaloy ng tubig at minamasdan niya. Sabi namin, uh, may nag, ano, na teacher, patayin mo, nagsasayang kang tubig. Nung kinausap, rinoses yung bata, sabi niya, first time ko ho makakita na may dumadalo na tubig. At doon sa mga, mga picture na visual na yon, nakita namin na totoo ba ho itong nangyayari na ito. No, sa atin, mga sa urban areas, ay walang kwenta sa atin yan. Sa bata na sa rural area, yung pagtulo ng tubig, parang napakalaking bagay sa kanya na naramdaman niya at nakita niya. Naranasan niya yung tunay na pagkuha ng tubig na kanyang iinumin. So ngayon, eh, daang matubig na yun. <laughs> ngayon, daang matubig na yun. Kasi so, may tubig na. Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll open the floor to our friends from the media. I have uh, already seen Lingoy Alcoa. So, opinion. Uh, is it an opinion or a question? <laughs> Lingoy, good morning. Question po. Sa title po ng ating katihan ngayon, Popularity, uh, uh, popularity, popularity, or machinery. Yung popularity is uh, out of nowhere may dumating na kandidato ultimate lahat ng tao nag-focus sa kanya. Yung winability is uh, measured. Uh, yung survey ratings mo uh, may conversion ka dahil may tiwala ang tao. Yung, yung popularidad uh, Digong is an example of popularity initially. Uh, Uh, Robredo is winability. Uh, machinery, well, you know that. Uh, I, I guess uh, one lesson learned na hindi pa rin sineseryoso ng mga kandidato. Uh, marami na hong tumakbo na may machinery, walang nanalo. 
So, simula natin kay Mitra, kay Speaker De Venecia, kay Danding Kuangko. I mean, they have the financial muscle and the resources, uh, human resources, still hindi nanalo. So, uh, siguro yung isang hindi nababanggit dito, anong mali sa kampanya ng, ni Rojas? Nagsimula siya sa daang matuwid. It, it was supposed to be a story of continuity, but limited to daang matuwid. Tapos after 45 days, hindi man lang sila nag increase o ano, still decided to keep on doing daang matuwid. Ano nangyari kay BP Binay? Again, yung nim, yung, dapat maging nimble yung organization eh. Uh, pag nakita mong hindi nawawala, kailangan may gawin ka kaagad at kailangan yung gawin mo at base sa pagkakaintindi ng popularidad at winability sa sabotante. So, yung kay, kay BP Binay, napakasipa. Ikot ng ikot. And sa, sa tingin ko, siya yung pinaka-highest frequency in terms of visiting. Um, in fact, meron pa siyang pinuntahan sa summer, if I recall right, na ang, ang presidenteng bumisita sa kanila ay si Jostado Makapagal. Ganun kalayo. Kaya yung appreciation sa kanya. At ginawa namin example yun. Uh, pagdating ng boto, nawala ng boto siya doon. So, so kami parang ano nangyari? So, siya lang yung bumisita doon, lahat ng tao. It's a small town. Bumaha. Bumaha sa bayan dahil nalaman nilang may bisi presidente dumating. At ang parating sinasabi, ang dumating lang sa amin ho ay si Justado Makapagal. Nung dumating yung election day, wala ako kaming kuan para mga 3 lang o 5 yung boto. So, again, kung titingnan mo in terms of uh, Kung titingnan mo niyo yung uh, strategiya kay BP Binay, meron hong boto si BP Binay kasi may core siya. Uh, yung core hong yun ay eh, 9 million. Kaya kami nagtataka hanggang ngayon, bakit naging 5 million lang? Core hong yun. Wala pa yung... Um, uh, wala pa yung political support at wala yung market votes, yung command votes. Uh, sa politiko. Kasi yung politiko, talunan ng talunan, hindi mo may measure talaga yung command votes. Pero yung core ho niya, composing of Makati, uh, composing of the Boy voice, voice Scouts and the APO. Kasi ang ginawa ho namin doon, nag-times 10 kami. So, pamilya-pamilya. Kaya nga sinasabi ko nung una, bakit doon sa presintong yun, wala doon yung pamilya nung, nung isa naming core na nahiwalay. So, yung gumawa ng, kaya ho, parati kong sinasabi, willing rin ho kaming magpa-audit. I-audit yung sistema kasi gusto din namin ang mangyari. Ano nangyari doon sa 9 million namin? Kaya parati sinasabi ni BP Binay before the election day, kaya natin ito mananalo. Co very confident ho kami. Na, uh, dahil sa dulo, kami yung handa in terms of platforma. Uh, siguro may issue na mali rin ang pagkakahandle. Pero nakita naman niyo yung, yung base niya nandun eh. So again, um, winability. Uh, when you attack someone for 17 months, that winability will be eroded. So you, you need to be nimble in order to adjust the messaging in the organization. Okay. Pwedeng Dai. sagutin yung tanong niya huh? tungkol sa core. Kung anong, anong nangyari dun sa 9, bakit naging 5? Sige nga. Mm. I, can I add later to what she said about uh, your question? Your win, uh, ah, kaya na muna. Tapos, oh, sige, okay. I ah. just want to clarify, no, sinabi mo popularity, winability, or is it machinery? I would say, no, from the way the Comelec and Smartmatic are operating, it's winability. What do I mean by winability? Number one, kailangan babayaran mo sila. And then number two, kailangan may tatak or may imprenta ka ng Malacanang. Look at uh, Duterte. Of course, sinasabing winability niya, popular, nag-16. But remember, uh, from what we understand, there was that negotiation when Noinoy went with Marojas to the house of Grace Po and asked that either one of them withdraws yung naglupasay pa si Noinoy. Look at what happened. It did not reach any conclusive thing. Walang nag way. So, anong sinabi? Because ayaw ni Noinoy kay Duterte. O oh, look what happened. Yung representatives ng kaliwa, Tinawagan ni Joma Season Ren, si Noy Noy, do not be afraid because you will not be incarcerated under a Duterte presidency. So that convinced na pwede pala. O so yun, yung, yung makinarya ng pagdaya, ginamit na rin para sa kanya. And then, you look at again the vulnerability of Robredo. And they all believe 
na si Duterte ay magiging Pangulo. But just to make sure that he toes the line or that he does not do anything out of hand, there is Lenny Robredo na kaumang. Pag, pag may gagawin siya, o di plan B, mawawala si um, Duterte, and then she will step in. So I guess in our kind of elections, it's winnability and, that, and by that, I mean money and yung tatak ng present administration. <laughs> Oh, ngayon, Lingoy. Sagutin ko yung uh, 4 million votes. Ako po ay core ni Binay. Hindi lang po ako core voter. Ako po ay convener ng isang parallel organization, KKK. Okay. Ngayon, nung January 4, naimbita ako ng organizer ng isang Grace po parallel organization So, ako po'y nag-attend sa birthday at dahil ako'y welcome, every week, bumabalik ako doon. So, ako'y naging b night by day, po by night. Okay? So, alam ko yung nangyayari. Hindi ko alam yung nangyayari sa politiko. Alam ko nangyayari doon sa parallel organizations. Okay. Anyway, to make matters short, inamin ko naman ito sa column ko last week. You know? Binoto ko pa rin si Binay. Because I also believe there was no chance for Grace Po to win. But if I thought that Grace Po could win, I would have voted for Grace Po. So ang ako'y naniniwala na maraming core, no, I stick it out, pero at the last moment, ako hindi in the secrecy of the of the, kasi wala na nga yung gano'n eh, get folder na lang. In the secrecy of the folder, maraming core na maaring lumipat, no? Pero, ang, ang uh, paniwala ko, nagkaroon ng perception, yung lumabas si B9 number 4, no? Maaring dinaya siya, maaring hindi siya number 4, pero, nagkaroon ng perception na yung yung uh, yung core ni Binay na ganun ay natutunaw. Kaya nung nagkaroon ng perception na ganun, maraming politiko at maraming individual voters nag umalis rin kay, kay Binay. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, kung may cheating, kung may daya, I cannot say may daya eh, because wala akong ebidensya. No? Pero assuming na may cheating, yung mandaraya, dadayain niya by means of bawas, yung lumalambot yung, yung may perception na bumababa. Mm -hmm. no? yun, yun, ang, yun ang sagot ko doon sa 4 million votes ni Binay. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Next time, we will invite you to join the panel. If, if, uh, Parang masaya. Yes, add, Malu. I, I will just add, uh, yun kay Duterte, ho, ang potential number nun, mas mataas. Kasi, hindi na lang nila masyadong nabawasan dahil ang talaga yung pulgada ang, ang lakas. So, kung sino man yung... I mean, I don't have proof. Uh, again, I say electoral fraud needs evidence, hard evidence. Um, pero whoever designed that, that, that shaving is really stupid. Because if you designed something to make you win, bakit si Duterte nanalo? ba? Diba? Uh, so, so, meaning... Siguro na-realize nila, grabe talaga yung buhos ng suporta ng kay, kay Duterte. It's it very, very uh, brazen na nga yung ginawa doon sa dalawa eh. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning po and, and binay. Yung uh, mar, walang question yun. Hindi, yun nga yung nag-gain. Uh, hindi, kaya, ah, okay. Hindi, pero uh, Malu, let me ask you, uh, could it be possible na kinargahan si Digong? Para manatili yung Smartmatic sa susunod na eleksyon? Well, could be. I mean, all these are plausible ko, no? Um, ang, ang akin lang, uh, yung operation was such that they learned from 2010, 2013, and even made this very strategic, which means it was not nationwide, but very, very province-focused. Ah, uh, Okay. Province focus. Yes. Well, dagdag na lang ano. Masaya tong topic na to. Yung my problem with this word winability is grammatical. Sigingat, kasi hindi tama. A contest is winnable. A race is winnable. 
a candidate is electable or not. Okay. Ayan ang problema ko dyan, no? Pero it's been accepted in the same manner we have accepted words like agropation, kung ano-ano, na non-existent in dictionary. So, uh, anyway, uh, nagkakaintindihan tayo. The latest is presumptive. Uh, <laughs> pero, presumptive, oh. Uh, pati sa Amerika, ginagamit yung presumptive. So, pwede na. Nating gamitin, no? Uh, ang tingin ko, um, makinarya ba? O something else? Uh, Nag-umpisa tayo. Ang, the campaign, na, natanda natin, ang kampanya ngayon, at especially at the national level, uh, was conducted uh, in the TV ads and in the surveys. May reklamo ngayon uh, uh, from the BP Camp yata, na yung official countdown coincided with the survey results. With the survey results. Uh, dapat hindi na sila nagtataka. Kasi ang Ang presumption ng araw, yung survey results are, are meant for mind conditioning. Ha? Na wala ka, undecided ka, pero nakita mo yung survey, kayo boboto mo yun according to the survey. In, in this election, I think, yung survey results, yun ang naging base ng mga mandaraya kung saan ilalagay yung resulta. So, yung correspondence ng uh, official results at saka ng lumabas sa survey, eksakto yan. Pareho. Oo. So, <laughs> yung surveys pagkatapos sinunda ng unofficial count ng PPCRB, uh, magkakasama lahat na yan. So, so, birds of the same feather must be from the same bird? <laughs> <laughs> so, ano? Winability ba yan? Yeah. We have to find another word for this. No? Mm, hindi naman makinarya yan eh. Oh. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, one of the things na never happened before. Really? All right. Maganda to. Uh, we have Pat Santos asking a question. Oh, the lady from uh, Channel 5. Ayan. Easy, easy. Please introduce yourself. Hi, good morning po. Maricel Halili from TV5. Ma'am, Malu, or kayo po, sino gusto mag-react? What, what can you just say about the statement of Mayor Duterte saying that there's no position yet for cabinet that will be offered for uh, Lenny Robredo? What kind of message will this give to the people? Well, that's a, real, that's a very realistic uh, message coming from a president-elect, uh, especially that Lenny is from LP and he is from PDP. Um, I think um, it, he also added there that she, he doesn't know Lenny that well. So I guess uh, in the next remaining months, uh, uh, if he finds time, um, they can have that conversation and have a common vision. Uh, Lenny is just waiting for that. Uh, there was supposed to be a, a, a informal meeting, but it never pushed through because of the the formation of the cabinet. Mm -hmm. So after today, um, uh, uh, um, Congresswoman Robredo will have um, a transition with the Vice President Pinay. And, and get to know the office of the vice president as an institution, and then hopefully um, have that meeting with the with President Duterte. It's a logical thing. I mean, um, she should not feel bad about it because that's the reality of politics. Senator, uh, the same. No, I, if you recall uh, the time of President Garcia, Makabagal was vice president. He didn't give Makapagal anything. And so Makabal, Makapagal spent the next uh, four years, at the time four years, no? Yeah. Four years. Four years going around the country campaigning for, for the next presidency. <laughs> so, uh, kung hindi mabigyan si Lenin ng cabinet position, that should not hurt her because this, not, uh, this should not really be part of her expectations. Hindi naman obligation ng president then nabigyan yung vice president ng position, eh, she should use the next four years. 
Uh, six years. Uh, sorry, six years. No? Uh, unless he becomes president in f a few months. <laughs> oh, what is that? Yeah. Linda, how does that sound to you? Yeah. Microphone, microphone, microphone. Mahirap i visualize it. I think we have to watch out in the next few days and weeks what will happen. From what we know, no, I'm sharing with you our intelligence report from Solidarity for Sovereignty. And what is that report? They say that if the Go Duterte has a liquidation squad, Malacanang also has its own equivalent of a liquidation squad. Now, they are going to vie for whoever will be the first to do it. So it has reached that point. That's our information. Now, aside from that, there is also this group of Bong Bong Marcos who even if Marcos has already stated, I will abide and respect, I will abide by and respect the proclamation, but his followers believe he was really cheated outright. That was, it was really in the plan to put in Lenny Robredo. So what do we expect? Do we see something as, uh, do we see the events unfolding as something very simple like Lenny Robredo being offered a cabinet position by the uh, incoming um, presumptive president? We don't believe that is so. There are so many ingredients beyond our control which are now at work because Remember, we have to focus on the sole desire of Malacanang to make sure that Noy Noy Aquino is not incarcerated. Although, of course, he has his mansion in Johor Bahru, where it has already been established. That is a where place. is this? Johor Bahru, Malaysia. Oh. Yes. Because remember, uh, when you were asking in your text, you said, what are the legacies of this administration? One of that legacy is treason. And we believe he is guilty of that because he was paid $10 billion together with his sister for the BBL law to be passed so that they can, take, uh, they can have a hand in the development and ownership of Mindanao. Masalimuot masyado itong... So, paano yun? Hindi nangyari BBL. Ano yun? Babawiin. Ay, hindi na. Uh, ipapagpatuloy lang nila. That's why he wants to make sure hawak nila presidente. That's why ganun yun. Hindi yun kasimpleng, um, sige na, uh, natapos na yun. Kalimutan na lang. They, they will make sure. Remember, yeah. the cabal is still there. They are ensuring that they will continue on and on as it happened. Remember, we are under the Aquinos for the last 30 years, 1986, now we are in 2016. There is a 30-year cycle. Um, oh. Yes, there is a 30-year cycle, and then it goes back 360 degrees. So what we are trying to say is that there could be a change in all of this, because uh, it really well, happens. That's part of 180 degree, yeah. but uh, it's really part of history, that when something happens way back, and then something will happen also in the years ahead. Now, we have reached that portion, and we believe they will not be satisfied just to remain in the sidelines. What they want is the power and the wealth, and they want to be sure they will continue to hold it until uh, the next election, yeah. 2019, 2022, and etc. That's how. Dai, uh, I've seen the room of uh, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo at Veterans Memorial Medical Center. It's quite big. Do you think Gloria will get out and somebody will come in? No, you know our position. No. He will be play uh, well. Uh, if uh, he is not able to contain what is going to happen, then, of course, he will be incarcerated also. But uh, we have that position about Gloria Arroyo in way back in 2010 that she was part and parcel of the cheating for Noy Noy. We have a copy of the series of email exchanges between Gloria and uh, Ronnie Puno at the time. How to cheat and to whom uh, they would, whom to, who they would favor for the cheating. Oh, and, yes. so you mentioned Ronnie Puno? Yes, at the time. 
Remember? So, he was at the time the ILG. So, this goes a long way back. This is a whole plan okay. for the ownership, possession, power of this country, which they have to continue holding on to. That's why we only have top 40 families or 250 families. Ang inosente natin, tayong lahat, oh, mag-discussion tayo dito, okay na, nakakalabas na yung ating mga gusto. Pero kawawa yung mahihirap, andyan pa rin yung street children, yung hunger, nandyan pa rin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it's about uh, lunchtime. I'd like to thank our friends from Electro Voice for providing an excellent sound system. Is there anybody from the floor who'd like to ask Pat? Ba? Milagro. Normally, nagtatanong si Pat. All convinced. All convinced. Okay. So, closing statements. Papa salamat nga. Pero closing statements, of course. What do you have to say? What do you expect from the Duterte administration? Salamat po sa pag-imbita. Uh, In-expect namin and in this coming few months, uh, magkaroon ng mas malinaw na programa ang ating incoming president sa pag-address ng mga problema na nabanggit ko tungkol sa kabataan at children. Maraming salamat po at God bless po. Thank you. Senator? Well, uh, kailangan lang po tayo magmasid at uh, magkaroon ng masusing pag-aaral. Thank you. Uh, Bert, mula muna sa'yo. Well, uh, 32 days from now, a new government will come in. And uh, uh, we expect na yung promises uh, would be done, ano? Um, would be fulfilled. Uh, solving traffic, solving crimes, and of course, prosperity for the country. Okay. Thank you. Dai? Thank you for the invitation, Mela, and the rest of your companions here. In behalf of Solidarity for Sovereignty, we thank you for this opportunity, but also may I say that kindly um, be on the lookout for further announcements from us because we will not stop until we have helped the situation where our country is really at the bottom. Thank you. She's also a Bikulana, by the way. Uh, yes, Malu? Thank you, Melo, and thank you to everyone in Tapatan. I'm... I'm so glad I get to hear uh, Ms. Montaire here in, in, in their plans. Um, the only thing I want to leave as a takeaway is this. Um, there are very, very high expectations from both Duterte and Robredo. And I hope they can live up to those expectations or else it's again us who will bear the brunt. So let us um, be critical, uh, katulad ng sinabi ni Senator Tatad, uh, let us magmasid, patuloy yung pagmamasid. And if there is a chance for us to roll our sleeves and help for the country, let us do that. Thank you very much. Mga kaibigan, on that note, we'd like to end our special presentation today. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure to have our guests today and uh, you with us uh, exchanging views. Maraming maraming salamat po. At uh, napag-usapan ng mga issue na hindi napapag-usapan sa ibang forum. It's indeed a uh, pleasure. I look forward to having more of this kind. Sa susunod na edisyon, we'll have some lawmakers and some from the party list. Isang tanong, do sa mga taga-party list, eh, ano ba talaga kinakatawan nyo? At ang isa sa mga confirmed na dadalo, ay mula rin sa Bicol, yung ako Bicol. Anyari, nanalo kayo. Yun, yun ang topic. So, magandang po. I'd like to thank our friends from the Aristocrat and Elect Electro Voice for the superb sound system. Thank you. Have a nice day.